And then uh, I would like to spend a little time to see uh, what's the new challenge from the deep submicon or uh, semiconductor and what's the 3D plus solution. And also what's the future radiation test strategy. That's what we call design oriented strategy. So what's the situation of the third party dice uh, radiation test for manufacturers? Uh, I'd like to say it will be very difficult if we don't have a strategy. So, first, the radiation test is quite, uh, I would say, expensive and complicated. Uh, we will not discuss about the price, and today we just for the technical. First, it's complicated. Why? If we look at the, the, the ESA requirement, so I copy the slide from uh, Christian, uh, just to present the uh, I think uh, this month at the SCON at the ESA. Here's a list of the radiation related standard. We have the ECSS QST 60 15 C. That's our baseline. Okay. And then we have a lot of the related, like the space environment, method of the calculation, and the technique for the AZ FPGA design guidelines. And also some related like the EE component uh, standard, uh, dependability, and the moving test, for example, the power MOSFET, uh, some derating should be applied. So a lot of the standard. That's just a part of them. And then we also have a, what we call the test standard. Was, uh, Christian presented this morning the ESCC 22900 uh, for the TID, the new issue. And also we have a lot of the American uh, standard. So fortunately <coughs> now we are quite uh, co coordinated between the European and the US standard. And then for the single event, we have the ESCC 2510 and now uh, in the coming month, I think uh, we also probably have the uh, displacement damage test deadline. <laughs> Should be difficult for us to survive. And then, from the product point of view, when we're using the third party dies, we're also uh, in a very difficult situation. The general background is that. Uh, the space market volume is almost negligible compared to the commercial market. <coughs> so we don't have the bugging powers, uh, we don't have the, all of the information, the technical design, the process, uh, the law, the traceability, for example. Uh, whatever is the radiation hard and die or cost, the detailed design always trade as confidential by the semiconductors. So in most cases for the radiation test, we just test like a black box. And sometimes it's very difficult to get the general, even the general process information. For example, it's a bipolar or CMOS, a bulk or XP, epitaxy. And the most time it's impossible to get the detailed process information. For example, for the gain uh, oxide, uh, isolation structure details, which means it's very hard to estimate the radiation characteristics. So, at the end, uh, also, it's very difficult to get the full traceability. That's the critical point in our space uh, product. So, we should guarantee what we test and what we all use is the same. It is the same mask for the SEE and the same law for the Lord, for the TID. So, that's the difficulties we are facing today with the third party dice. So, What's the situation for the manufacturers? Very simple. At first, we have very exigent the designer. They ask a very uh, all of the details uh, of the test. <coughs> Not only the result, but also uh, how you test it, the cross-section curve. Uh, Not only the, all of the result in the different uh, operating mode, but also how you mitigate it. A lot of the information request. And another side, we have the market pressure. 
When I explain to El Pierre of the talk, he don't understand why I ask him to arrange a, a test as soon as possible, because we have a we always the customer always need a higher density, the new products, uh, uh, and then ask us to make a whole qualification before the end of life of the product. So the real situation of the manufacturer is like this. What the mess. So that's the situation. That's the situation today. Uh, we are here. Uh, we are facing uh, for the radiation test for manufacturing when we're using the third party time. Moreover, even worse, we have some new challenges now. Uh, because now for the semiconductors, they are passing through the steep sub micro uh, uh, stage. So when they come into the deep sub micro, uh, there is some new technical and the commercial challenge are showing up. So technically, for example, the new structure and the process are not always good to radiation. Recently, the Renaissance, for example, everyone knows the Renaissance is scrap home, the underline have a new one. Uh, in theory, the new uh, structure and the process should help for the radiation, but the result is uh, it's completely uh, reversed and we cannot use it uh, anymore. Secondly, we, we observe the big variation, like the, from the process to process, manufacturer to manufacturer, manufacturer to manufacturers, design to design, revision to duration, that's the traditional ones. And now the new one is the part number to part number, also low to low, and even now pieces to pieces variation. For example, the new uh, NAND flash, uh, when it lower to lower than 30 nanometers, uh, we see a big variation uh, from pieces to pieces from the, at the TID test. And then also, now during the test, uh, we, we observe a lot of the hard errors mixed with the soft errors. When we talk about TID, we make the functional test, the parameter test. But now for the memory, we have the bit flip. Uh, normally, it's typically the single even upset, but now we start observe at the TID. We have the micro latch up. It's a soft error. Now it mixed with the single even latch up, something like the high current CFE. So permanent CFE is quite difficult to define it as a hard error or soft errors. On the other side, at the soft error side, it's also very complicated. So we have the single bit error double bit error, multi bit errors, and now we have the row errors, column errors, and also stack bit, persistent flip bit, uh, confirm the unleaning effect, temporary and the persistence, safety, device safety, high current event, extra extra. So very complicated, the new challenge, we need to have very deep understanding about the component that we are testing. Commercially, uh, the semiconductors is op optimizing their manufacturers to lower the price. But sometimes, this optimization is catastrophic for the space. For example, when they shrink the pr process, modify the materials, change in the foundry, each time we need to retest the component. And we have a much shorter and a shorter life cycle than before. Now it's a, a six months to one year life cycle in the commercial market. Comparing to one or two year, we make a qualification for a evaluation test for the component. And also some uh, commercial vendor, they have some product long life management. They will keep the same part number, but they will change the different foundry and the fab. And it's, very, it's highly risky to the space traceability. Because you, you don't know where it's manufactured, if there anything, materials, process has been changed. And also the combined dye design. Uh, uh, it's very difficult now to make the dye mask verification. May I make an example also for the NAND flash? The MLSC and the SLSC, they are using the same dye design. Probably it's just the last the lento, mental layers is different, or even it's the same. They just put a different voltage threshold in the pump inside of the NAND flash. It's very difficult to make the time mask verification now. So, 
that's a global view of uh, the new uh, challenge uh, today we are facing to make the radiation test of, and then what's the 3D plus strategy now so actually it's quite uh, quite easy uh, quite simple so we we establish what we call a evaluation qualification plus stocking and the reuse system to make a radiation test. So at the beginning, a pretty large evaluation uh, will be done when we start to make a candidate scan. I make an example for the SRAM. We test more than 20 SRAM uh, for the radiation test uh, to understand uh, which one potentially should be good for, uh, for the space. And based on this test result, we will make a completely uh, qualification following the ESCC uh, and the ECSS standard uh, when the potential good dice show up. Uh. And then, just before the end of life of the component, we will make a strategic inventory at a 3D plus because uh, uh, when we make this kind of inventory, we will take care of around five to ten years life cycle. The volume is uh, uh, relatively big, so in this case, we have a pretty good bargaining power with the manufacturers, with the semiconductors, I say, uh, to get all of the support, to get a very good trustability and a technical support uh, from the uh, semiconductor level, from the packaging level, from the design level, from the application level. We can get all of the technical supports uh, when I get a volume. And then the last one is uh, reuse the result because we make a very carefully precise qualification, uh, reuse the result, and then we will do further design-oriented test to put more added value to the, to the test. So what that means, design-oriented test. So basically today we are talking about uh, when we look at the, the, the study for the TAD and the SEE, around 400 uh, samples has been studied, uh, 200 hours uh, beam time has been used. Uh, that's more, uh, how to, from my point of view, mechanism-oriented or um, uh, research-oriented. But from our side, 3D Plus, we are more from our side is design or application oriented. So what that means? So first, uh, we make some evaluate and select the suitable die. I take a memory, uh, for example, for the flash and the DRAM. So we classify different radiation errors, the hard errors, the soft errors. Very simple, the hard errors, TID, SEO, should be guaranteed at the die level. Uh, they are qualification. If they cannot reach the certain TID uh, from uh, at a 3D plus, it's minimum 50 to 100 kilowatt, single even large up immune, the TO 60 MeV square centimeters per milligram. So we will try to find the candidate. It can make the guarantee at the die level for the hard errors. That's our first step. Second, we will characterize the soft error single even notch up, single even functional interruption. So at this, at this step, we will try to understand what happened, to which, which, which part of the, of the, of the memory created this kind of the event. Is there any possibility to mitigate it? Especially the safety now today is very complicated because it's con concerned about the control <laughs> logic and uh, you need to have a very precise understanding about what is inside of the memory. So that's why I say that we got a lot of the support from the, from the semiconductor, from design point of view. And then we try to uh, make some guarantee by mitigation <coughs> and how. So uh, <coughs> so we will we are developing our radiation hardened by design controllers, which will take care of the single even upset, safety, these kind of soft errors. And then, traditional, we have our memory module, they will have a guarantee uh, for the hard errors. So, the combination of these two 
we call it 3D plus solution now. What we said is uh, high reliability electronics combine the space radiation hardened by design and the commercial of the shelf performance to meet the mission's requirement. So hardened and also high performance. That's our how the, the idea of our test of the day. So how? What's the what's the product now? So if you know 3D plus, you know we are pretty good. Um, let me say pretty good in the memory. So traditional, we have the known runtime value for memory, a lot of different memory. Now recently, we've introduced two uh, what we call the ATIMS radiation tolerant intelligent memory stack, flash. And also another is the radiation intelligent memory controller, is IP core. So this one is a. Uh, we have our relation hardened ASIC inside of the module to manage the NAND flash. And this one is targeted for the FPGA uh, IP core, it's a controller IP core, targeted to DDR2 and DDR3. So for the, for the ACT teams, uh, we can see that uh, based on our test result, we developed this uh, uh, relation hardened ASIC centralized the SE single unit effect management. So there is a three nine flash inside. Uh, based on the result and the mission's re requirement, the user can select the either in the TMR or EDEC <coughs> mode to manage the single unit upset. And also based on our relation test results. We understand that there is a high current safety, so we have the power manage power control part inside of the module to monitor the current and manage the high current safety. And then we have another part, we have the high reliability NAND memory to manage the NAND flash, bad block, and the wire leveling, yeah. and also to make the single even effect the telemetering. And also, Beside all of this, the TID and the single UN launch up is guaranteed at all component levels. So all these are based on our relation test. It's a design oriented based test. So you should understand what happened at SU, so what's the current of the CFP and how to make the single even effect management. So that's the one of the example of our result of the relation test for the land flash. The second one is uh, what do we call the radiation intelligent uh, memory controller. It's the IP core. Uh, it's developed for the FPGA. It's uh, targeted for the DDR2 and the three uh, uh, memories. You can see before, traditionally you have uh, several DDR2 uh, uh, dies and then connected to the to the FPGA, have a very large data bus, 32 or 64 bit data bus, and then you should have a, some standard uh, controller, IP, inside the FPGA, FPGA, and around it you should develop the radiation mitigation layers to manage like the SCU and the CEFI. So what we propose today, based on our understanding of the DDR2 and the test results, we provide a DDR, 3D plus DDR2 radiation tolerant module. 72B and the 48B in one module. And then also we developed this uh, control IP call. It can be integrated in the FPGA. So this I IP call, this controller, will manage all of the single event effects. As usual, the TID and the large half of the, of the module has been guaranteed at the die level. And uh, the, the upset. Uh, uh, has been managed uh, in different uh, ECC code. And then we have also a patent uh, uh, pending the technique uh, to manage the, the, the CEFI. So we ought to be guaranteed the CEFI immune. And the no data loss. So that's our solution at the end. You can see that uh, it's a customer board. We have the 72B, the DDR2 module. The IP core is integrated to the, to the FPGA, and then also we have our 
DDR2 termination regulation. So it's a full plug and play regulation DDR2 learning solutions. So the IP controller in the board, a consistent and fully validated DDR2 and <coughs> three uh, memory system solutions. And the user no need to test the DDR2 and the three memories. <coughs> No need to understand the radiation behavior. No need to design the radiation mitigation and to qualify the demonstrate the system performance. All this has been done at the 3D plus by our uh, radiation test. So uh, the designer can focus on the application code development. Why we can do that? Because each time, uh, as I said, uh, the focus can create something, added value. When we scan our different uh, paths, we have a general understanding about the performance and the beam and the, and the radiation source. And then when, 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 when we select a good candidate, we will make a very deep uh, radiation test to uh, combine the support from the semiconductors. And normally you can find a good solution to mitigate it. So, uh, that's our uh, solutions to make a summary. The three points is our strategy uh, today and in, in the coming uh, years. First, we are following the ESCC and the ESCC, uh, ECSS, the standard and the specification to do our radiation test. Secondly, we maintain a privileged relationship with semiconductors through a volume, uh, through, uh, uh, through some uh, volume uh, purchasing. And the last one, so we make a more added value uh, test, uh, what we call the design-oriented or application-oriented uh, uh, radiation mitigation uh, test. So that's all. <coughs>